In this video, I'm going to show you how to enable WooCommerce catalog mode or request the quote mode in just a few simple steps. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we are on our demo site and currently this is how my shop page look. Okay, so here you can see all the um, add to cart button and if it's a variable product, you'll see the select option here. Um, prompting users to navigate to the product page and then go ahead and make a purchase. So I'm going to show you how to convert your shop page and product page from looking like this to more like this. Here you can see there's no um, buy now button. We can show a custom message such as call for a price or request a quote and so on. So I'm going to show you how you can achieve all of that. And to do so, we'll be using the WeSuite request a quote plugin. So just head over to WeSuite.com, go ahead and download the WeSuite request a quote plugin. I'll leave the link in the description below. And with that said, let's head over to our dashboard and let's configure our WooCommerce catalog mode. Okay, so here we are in our dashboard and now the next step, assuming you've downloaded the WeSuite request a quote plugin, is just to go ahead and upload that plugin. So we'll go plugins, add new, go ahead and upload and install the plugin. Once you've done so, you'll see this WeSuite menu here, go ahead and click activate. Once you've done so, it'll automatically redirect you to this add-ons page here. And then from here, we can just go ahead and enable this request a quote plugin, okay? So once you've toggled this to on, just go ahead and click this manage link here. If you don't see this manage link, just refresh the page and you'll see this manage link and you'll also see the request the quote menu here as well. So I'm just going to click manage. Okay, and I've already created a few rules. So in your case, um, the first step would be to click add new rule. Okay, so we'll give this rule a name and it's just for internal purposes. So in a future, you might have several rules going um, at once, right? So for example, maybe you just want to enable the request the quote mode for specific products, right? Um, then in that case, you can create multiple different rules, targeting different product categories, different products, different user roles, and so on. But we're going to keep it super simple today. We just want to enable um, catalog mode for our entire store, okay? So I'm just going to name this one catalog mode. Okay, and then here where it says um, rule type, we get to choose who we want to target this rule to. So we can set it to guest users, which are users logged out of our site, or we can set it to a specific user role. Um, in the future, I think these two options will be one. So I think here it will probably just say, um, I don't know, probably select user role or something like that. And then the guest user will be within that user role as well. So in the future, I think it will just be one option. Okay, so here where it says rule priority, in the event that a customer matches multiple different rules, then the particular rule with the lowest priority will trigger for that user, okay? So the priority goes from one being the highest and 10 being the lowest, okay? So we can set this to one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select a guest users, right? Which are users logged out of our site, okay? And then I'm gonna apply this to all products. Again, we can set it to a specific product or products within a particular category, but we're gonna select all products here. Okay, and then here where it says high price, we'll select yes. Okay, so where the price would usually be, we can add a custom message, right? So since this is displaying for logged out users, we can say um, call for a price, log into view price, or whatever the call to action is, or we can just leave it blank to completely hide the price, okay? So I'm just gonna leave this blank for now. And then for the add to cart button, I'm going to go ahead and replace the add to cart button with a custom button. Okay. So instead of actually adding a custom button label, I'm going to leave this blank again. So it essentially just hide um, the add to cart button completely. Okay. So if you wanted, you can redirect prospects to a particular contact form. Um, it's totally up to you. Okay. But again, as I said, for this option, we're just going to leave everything um, blank. Okay. So everything will be hidden to the customer on the front end, okay? Okay, so our rule saved fine. So now we'll go ahead and view our site in a private mode, okay? So we'll replicate what it's like for a guest user, okay? Okay, so here we can see we're viewing our shop page and here there's no price in sight and there's no add to cart button as well. So if I click on this particular product here, here we've just got the product information and there's no um, add to cart button, no um, price, okay? So I'm gonna move this over here and now we'll edit the rule. Okay, so this time we're gonna hide the price but we'll add a custom message, okay? So we'll say something like call for a price, right? 
So we'll scroll down here and then here where it says hide price, we'll say um, call for price, okay? Okay, and then we can just go ahead and update this. Okay, so now when we refresh this page, we should see our custom message, okay? So instead of displaying a price, here we've got this custom text which says call for a price. So again, you can be creative. You can say, um, as I said, log in to view price. So this is the excellent lead gen to actually get the prospects to register to your site to be able to view the price and okay. And then you can just follow up with those particular prospects, but it's totally up to you and your use case. Okay, so that's our option we can add a custom button or we can just show a request the quote button okay so let's go ahead and do that now so i'm going to remove this text so the price section will remain completely hidden and then this time we're going to use our default um, request the quote system okay before we do that so here we've enabled this custom button here so we can actually add a button label and then we can add a custom link okay so whenever the user clicks the button we can determine where we want to send them once they've clicked the button, okay? So this is how you'd set this here. So we could say um, quote, for example, and then we could say something like www.google.com, okay? And then whenever they click that quote button, it will send them over to google.com. Clearly that doesn't make any sense, but hopefully you get the idea. Here we'll go ahead and select to replace the add to cart button with um, a quote button, okay? So now it's using our default quote system, okay? So we can say something like request the quote. Okay, so we can say something like request the quote and then we can go ahead and update this. Okay, and then now when we go ahead and refresh this page, here we can see our custom quote button. Okay, and for variable products, it's exactly the same. So if we head back over to our shop page. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on this particular product here. So here the customer can go ahead and choose their variation, right? So they can say I'm interested in um, this particular product and I need one kg. And since our stock um, levels is set to five, it makes sense to just choose five for example okay and we'll just add this to our quote basket okay and then here you can see we've got five items within our quote basket we can see the variation is the one kg variation okay so we can either click on our quote basket here or we can just click view quote okay and then from here we can go ahead and enter in our information so again for this particular quote form field um, we can go ahead and add various different fields right so here i've just added the customer name, email address, and any other message that they want to add. We've also included this shipping block here. So since we're requesting a quote, we'll need their shipping address, but so we can actually give them a quote for the shipping of that particular product as well. Okay. So I'll just fill in my details here. Okay. And then let's go ahead and submit this quote. Okay. So it says it's been successfully um, submitted. So let's navigate back to our dashboard and let's see where we'll actually review this quote. Okay. So all we'll do is we'll navigate to submitted quotes. Okay. And this is the quote, which I've just submitted, right? As a user. So we can go ahead and view the quote and here we can see all the user information. We can see their shipping details. Okay. And now we can send them a quote. We can add a expiration date for our quote. So we can say this quote will expire in a few weeks from now. And here we can see that they requested a quote for this variable product. And it's the one kg variation and the needed five items here we can see the current price is 30 dollars per unit here we can give them a custom price so we can say um, 25 dollars for example okay and for the shipping cost we can add a custom shipping fee based on the information we've got on a customer okay so we can say i don't know let's say 250 dollars for the shipping right okay we can add extra products as well to the quote and we can also leave a custom message. They'll be able to respond to this custom message as well. Okay, so we just said this is the best price we can do for now. Okay, and we can hit publish to send this to this particular customer, okay? Okay, so once a customer receives the quote, they'll have an option. Well, they'll have three options. They can either accept or reject the quote, or they can respond to the message, okay? So they'll get a link to a contact form to where they can actually respond to the message. And once they've responded, we'll see the message here. Okay. Okay. So I'll quickly explain the flow um, of when it's a registered users. If the user is registered, then the flow is similar to um, a guest user. The only difference is in, so in the user's account area. So if we navigate back to the front end, 
Okay, so when they navigate over to their account area, they'll have this new tab here which says quotes, and then this will give them a history of all the quotes that they've submitted. They can view the quote, and if they approve the quote, so they can accept or reject. Again, here's the note box, they can respond to the note. They can download a quote into a PDF, and if we were to approve this particular um, quote, so if we say approve, then it will automatically convert it into an order. When we click this link here, we can see our order here. If the billing and shipping address is correct, we can just click pay now and then just go through the payment process, okay? So we can choose our payment methods and just pay for the particular product, okay? We can see we've got our custom shipping, custom pricing. Okay, there's a lot more we can do with this particular plugin. We'll just quickly review a few of the settings in the back end, okay? So we'll head back over to our dashboard. Okay, so we'll navigate over to WeSuite and then request the quote. And then we'll just click on settings here and we'll quickly review a few of the settings. So we've got a few general settings. Um, so for our quote basket, which is, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've got this quote basket here. Okay, and here we can choose um, which navigation we want to add our quote basket to. I think in the future we'll add a short code so you can actually specify where to display it via a short code. Okay, but currently you can just choose which navigation to automatically add it to. We've got two styling for our quote basket, so we can show um, the quote basket as a drop down or just as an icon with the number of quotes in it. Okay, we've got the option to allow customers to convert their um, order into a cart. We've got a different video explaining um, all about this, so I'll link it in the description below. We can enable a quote for guest users, so that's already enabled, so that's fine. Um, Ajax adds a quote, we can enable this one, so it just prevents the page from refreshing. Here we can add in the store manager's email. We've got a few custom messages. So when a customer um, submits a quote, we can add a custom message there. Um, redirection. So once they've submitted their quote, we can automatically redirect them to a specific page. Um, fields. So these are the fields that we've got enabled on our quote page. Okay. And we can enable the different fields and we'll add more options as well as um, time go on. And for our shipping block, we've got the shipping block here. So just enable this option and it will automatically use the WooCommerce um, shipping fields, okay? Um, recapture, we can enable this. Email notification, so whenever a customer um, submits a quote and it's pending based on the status, we can automatically trigger certain emails, right? So when a quote's been approved, we can um, enable this option and then we can notify the admin that a particular quote's been approved. Um, the same for when it's rejected and the same for the customer email as well. So when a quote's pending, we can automatically send the customer a particular email, okay? Same for when they've approved um, a quote, we can automatically send them an email to probably inform them on what will happen next, how long the shipment will take and so on and so on, okay? So we can customize the messages here. Um, PDF settings. So we've got the option to allow customers to download their quote into a PDF um, form. That's just a quick overview of a few settings that you might want to configure, okay? So far, we've had a look at how to enable WooCommerce catalog mode, how to hide a price, how to hide the add to cart button, and how to enable the request a quote mode. And that's how you enable WooCommerce catalog mode in just a few simple steps. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you've got any questions, leave in a comment box below or reach out to support and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.